Hey guys, Ruckus Gaming here, coming at you with another episode of What the Hell is Up With That? In this series, I take those cards or relics that are intimidating or confusing or just too hard to figure out how to use because of their serious drawbacks, and I show new players how they can use those in their decks effectively. So, we're going to take a look at the deck, we're going to take a look at some of the fights, and then at the end, I'll have some final notes. But without further ado, let's get started and jump straight into talking about Runic Dome. I think this is another one of those relics. I can definitely say from personal experience that when I started off with the game, I definitely shied away from taking this. Not seeing the enemy in tents was extremely intimidating and I felt like if I did not have that information, there would be no way for me to win. And that is just simply not the case. And I think there are lots of cases where Runic Dome can be a pretty good take. I'll say more in my final notes at the end, but at the end of the day, if you've been playing for a while, you probably already have a good idea of what most enemies do and there are lots of resources between the Wikipedia and several mods that can help out with the information you're looking for as well. Runic Dome runs are similar to Frozen Eye runs in that they tend to be a little bit slower, a little bit more thinking, especially in the beginning of the combat, when you don't have everything set up yet, when you aren't scaled up yet. Uh, it can be a little bit harder, but once you get things going, uh, Runic Dome can really help you end fights quickly without really caring about what the enemy is doing. So, with that being said, let's take a quick look at some of the MVP cards from this run. Echo Form was definitely an MVP of this deck. It's always going to be a very significant addition to a deck. And especially in this deck, it worked incredibly well for us. Amplify was also very valuable because this was essentially just a crazy defect power deck. So the more powers we played, the better. And Amplify was absolutely fantastic for that. And no crazy defect power deck would be complete without Creative AI. This was the fuel that kept our deck going. There are a couple cards that I want to talk about in a more general, wide sense, and I think they're things that are always good to add to any deck, but especially in this deck, they were extremely powerful. Two things that you're always looking for in any deck are draw and energy, and so with that in mind, both Turbo and Overclock were great cards that helped keep the deck moving. And they also lean into this idea that even if they have the negative, Turbo has the Void and Overclock has the Burn, the strength that they provide heavily outweighs them and that you can just keep playing them to get more and more benefit with a relatively low penalty. And then if you do that enough, the penalty itself just doesn't matter. And I think that thematically fits into a Runic Dome deck very well. Now let's take a look at some of the MVP relics that helped us pull off this Runic Dome. We started off this run with a boss relic swap into Slaver's Collar, giving us an extra energy to start with, but only on those elite fights. So it actually was a bit of a penalty to begin because we weren't getting our Lightning Orb, but what it did do is pushed us down a path that encouraged us to visit as many elite combats as we could so we could get that benefit from the extra energy and when we get lots of elites we get lots of relics. Boss Swamp is a high risk high reward kind of choice to start off your run but when it works out it can quickly snowball into a very strong deck. Pandora's Box is another one of my favorites. If you've been a fan of this channel, you've probably seen me talk about it. And this was a pretty good Pandora's Box as well. It gave us a couple great powers with Buffer and Creative AI, one of the central pieces of our deck. 
It gave us our overclock. It gave us heat sinks, which came very in handy as well. And it's just another situation where taking a little risk can pay off with a very huge reward. And the more you take those risks and the larger rewards you get, the faster and faster your deck will move. And finally, Bottled Lightning was there so we could use our Apotheosis right away at the start of every combat, making sure everything was fully upgraded. Obviously, when you put all of these things together, at the end in hindsight, it looks like this absolutely crazy overpowered run. And you know what? You're not wrong. It was. I had every single little piece I needed. It lined up, you know, one in 1,000 type of run. It can be easy to write Runic Dome off because of that and to say that, well, you only got it because all these other pieces were there. And that's true. They definitely were a reason for my success. But at the same time, you don't have those runs if you don't start to recognize when they have the potential to happen. If you don't take that Niao uh, bonus that swaps your boss relics to start, then maybe this wouldn't have happened at all. Maybe if I didn't Pandora's box, it couldn't have happened at all. So you need to know when you have those opportunities to even have a chance for those really overpowered crazy runs. So now that I've talked about a couple of the key elements, let's take a look at this deck in action. All right, so here we start with Donu and Dekka. And as I am still getting over a bit of a cold, I want to save my voice. I want to go to text comments for the rest of these combats so I can save my voice for my closing thoughts at the end. And I will only do some minor editing for some long pauses.
now that we've seen this deck in action, let's take a look at some cards and relics that we didn't see but could have been really helpful. Skim is a classic defect draw card that we didn't get but is always good in any deck as are some of the other defect classics such as Cool Headed, Compile Driver, and Seek, the best draw card of them all. Double Energy is another one of the defect's strongest energy cards along with Fusion or Aggregate. Static Discharge is a power that probably would have helped us out a lot because we ended up taking a little bit of damage anyway even with the mods that were helping us out I was constantly forgetting about debuffs or buffs and so I was still quite often taking unexpected damage and Static Discharge would have been a great way to turn that damage into a positive. And Self Repair is just about the only power we didn't get this run and if you don't know this is something that cannot be created by creative AI. The developers don't want you to just sit and stall with creative AI to hopefully get multiple self repairs. Though you can do this with bird faced urn. If you stall with creative AI, you can use bird faced urn to heal 2 HP for every power, but don't hold your breath waiting for a self repair it's not gonna happen gambler's chip would have been an absolutely fantastic relic to have and the number one thing that this does is that it increases the consistency and quality of your turn one better turn ones means better more successful outcomes in your combats and that's especially valuable when you're missing important information like enemy intents Getting into your win condition quickly, no matter what the enemy is doing, is very valuable. Bag of Prep would also be very helpful. Increasing your turn one draw to help give a more consistent turn one. And either of the other two bottled relics, bottled tornado or bottled flame, could have been extremely helpful as we saw bottled lightning was. For my closing thoughts on Runic Dome, I just want to mention a couple different things that we saw demonstrated throughout the runs, but I wasn't quite able to speak to, and I apologize for the format and short video here, but still a little sick and trying to get over it. So with Runic Dome, one thing you need to keep in mind is that you may already have way more knowledge than you think you might not be able to immediately off the top of your head say this enemy will do this attack for this much damage on this turn but actually you might see that once you take runic dome and you start taking these combats you already have at least the basic pattern or you know turn one is always this or it buffs first then turn two is this even if you don't know the exact numbers you probably have a intuitive feeling and then you can find out what those numbers are. There are lots of mods out there. I use one called Bestiary. There's another one that's called Intent Graph. And you can also just go look up the Wikipedia and you can alt tab out of your game and see what the enemies are doing. It's a bit slow, it's a bit long, but I think it's also a good learning experience when you're new at the game. So don't be afraid to use those mods. Don't be afraid to use the Wikipedia. It's not cheating. Some of the best players in the world do it. I know about the Beastiary mod because I saw Baylor Ward using it, and if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. It's not going to make you a lesser player because you're quote unquote cheating by looking up the intents, even though you have Runic Dome. I don't think that's it at all. Lots of mods just give you helpful reminders, and you still need to make intelligent decisions. There's still a lot of chance involved. Many enemies have an attack pattern that can vary, and there are some rules about how it works, but you're never actually 100% guaranteed. You can still make a safe percentage play and be wrong and take damage. So nothing is guaranteed with Runic Dome. I wouldn't say that using any outside resources is a form of cheating or 
any kind of negative. It's all a positive. Just go for it. The second thing to keep in mind is that there may be times when you don't care what the enemy is doing. For example, you saw our defect deck once you got those powers into play, once he was scaled up and turned on, I stopped checking what the enemy was doing because it didn't matter. I knew that I was so powerful, I had so many cards I could play, hologramming those turbos and those overclocks over and over for massive energy and draw, I could just do whatever I wanted. The opposite can also be true. Maybe you're running a super small, tight, minimalist deck. Maybe you're going for the achievement. You've only got five cards in your hand. You're gonna be playing the same cards every turn no matter what. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing. So, if you're doing one of those achievement runs, like for Minimalist, this could be something that is essentially free energy. On the other side, maybe some turns you just completely brick the draw. You get a hand full of attacks, or you get a hand full of defense. Well, it doesn't really matter what the enemy is doing at that point, because you can only play what you've got and there's no thinking to be done. You just play the cards you have, and if you take damage, you take damage. If you waste a turn defending when they're buffing, there's nothing you can do about it. Not every single turn is going to be a huge conundrum. You're not going to be sitting there for 10 minutes, you know, deciphering and doing calculus to figure out the absolutely best perfect play line a lot of times the decision is made for you. There's really not a lot else you can do, so just play the cards in your hand. It doesn't have to be as complicated as you make it. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end, and I hope that this has been helpful so that the next time you see Runic Dome in your run, you can pick it and have a run just like I did. As always, please drop a like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff down in the comments. And if you have anything you want to know more about, a relic, a card, an achievement, let me know and I'll get something going. Have a great day and thanks for watching Ruckus Gaming.